Hi, so I'm Charlotte Fassa, third year PhD student in computational neuroscience. And today I wanna to talk about neuroscience books. So over the years, many people have asked me what kind of books I would recommend if I would start learning neuroscience or learning computational neuroscience from scratch. And I usually hesitate to answer this question because I personally think books are not necessarily the best way to learn computational neuroscience because computational neuroscience is such a practical subject. I think it's usually better to do, for example, projects or start coding online immediately. But I do think books can be a great subject towards your learning and to understand the general consensus of the field. That's why I have curated a list of eight books that I will go over today and show you which books I've personally really enjoyed over the years in, in learning computational neuroscience. So let's get straight into it. So in general, neuroscience and also computational neuroscience is a very broad field. You have clinical neuroscience, cognitive neuroscience, behavioral neuroscience, and you also have, for example, neuroimaging and single neuron recordings. And these are quite opposite. So that's why before starting to choose which books you should read, I highly recommend you to ask yourself one question and that is what do you want to do with the knowledge in five years? So for example, if you want to become a doctor or work in neurology, I would recommend very different books than if you want to become a computational neuroscientist and mainly make models. So part one is theoretical books that I have enjoyed. In general, if you're gonna read these types of books, I I don't recommend you to read them back to cover because they're usually super long and really complicated. How I usually approach these books is that I read the chapter dedicated to words the knowledge that I want to get. So for example, if I want to learn a little bit more about autoencoders, I wouldn't grab a deep learning book and read everything from start to finish, but I would read the dedicated chapter on autoencoders. And if I need some preliminary knowledge, I would also read that chapter. So um, the first book I want to start with is that I personally quite enjoyed is Theoretical Neuroscience by Peter Dayan and Elif Abbott. So this is a really good book if you are interested in single neuron recordings and how you make models for a single neuron and also groups of neurons. So in general, the book is divided into three parts. So you have neural encoding and decoding, you have neurons and neural circuits, and you have adaptation and learning. And I personally really liked the um, chapter four on information theory which is about entropy, mutual information, entropy maximization and also how this relates to neuron spiking for example and how to maximize the amount of information without neurons going absolutely crazy and spiking all the time. So yeah I really enjoyed this book. A good tutorial to go along with the book to also give you some computational practice is to go on Neuromatch. They have the um, leaky integrate and fire model and a tutorial about that that you can follow along and I think that that's a really good supplement towards this book because it's also about these types of models. And if you notice that you enjoy these type of models, I would then uh, recommend to buy the book and not start with buying the book. Yeah, and I will link all the tutorials and everything that I mentioned down below so you can also look it up. So the second book that I want to talk about is Dynamical Systems in Neuroscience. It's actually quite similar to the other one, at least the topics that they discuss are quite similar, but if I have to choose, I probably like this one a little bit better. I think the way it's written is a little bit easier and a bit more clear for studying because for example, they have these reviews of the important concepts, which I really like because then you can just see from the chapter what you're gonna learn and then dive into the chapter also they have these kind of pictures which I think make it a relative fun read. So in general this book is all about dynamical systems and dynamical systems are how multiple neurons work together and the models they use for that. If you studied physics or mathematics you probably know dynamical mathematics from that but if you've never studied that it's probably a bit hard to understand maybe at the first time so you get these kind of face planes and this is in 3d and i know the first time i saw this this was quite hard to understand but i think this book explains it really nicely and also for dynamical systems they also have a tutorial um, on neuromatch that i would highly recommend following and you can make these type of face planes and see which type of bifurcations exist. Um, and I think that's a really good intuitive way to get introduced to this type of topic. And if you really like this type of topic, I would probably get this one as well. <laughs> then the third book I want to talk about is the biggest book I have in my closet, probably. It's the book I think all 
neuroscience students probably have. So this is more about neuroscience and a little bit less about computational neuroscience. It's the Principles of Neuroscience by Eric Kandel at all. And I think if you want to learn anything about neuroscience, there is probably a chapter dedicated to it in the book. So for example, right now I'm working with several psychiatric disorders and um, patients and I wanted to learn a little bit more about psychosis. So I read the um, dedicated chapter about that in the book. So I also want to give you today a little study tip. Um, if you don't want to buy the books, I have discovered this hack and it's called PDF Element. So what you can do with PDF Element, which I really like, is you can take pictures of your books or of certain pages that you are reading and upload it directly to PDF Element. So with PDF Element, the first thing I do is I take a picture of the page or pages that I want to read. Then I import the image into PDF Element on my laptop, for example, and I change it to a PDF format. Then I click the OCR text recognition and then you can edit and copy the text directly. So at that point I usually summarize the text or highlight it etc and then I put it into my dedicated place in my second brain in Notion. If you've seen my video on second brain I really like creating a second brain and having most of my information in a dedicated space and PDF element really helps me with that. So this way I don't usually buy my textbooks although these textbooks I have but a lot of the textbooks I I just leave online and I just upload it to PDF Element and take the parts that I need. And in general, you can download PDF Element for free. I'll put the link down in the description below. And also if you're a student and you wanna get the pro version, you also have a discount code that they uh, provide. So yeah, let's get straight back to the video. So the fourth book I want to talk about is this one. This is for if you're a little bit more into computational neuroscience and you find deep learning really interesting. So it's Deep Learning by Ian Goodfellow, Joshua Bengio and Aaron Corville. I, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. So in general, Ian Goodfellow is one of the pioneers in deep learning. He works a lot on adversarial networks. And this book is a really good overview of everything there is to know in deep learning. I do have to say though, it's not an introductory level book. It's quite difficult to read. So I've read the um, chapters on autoencoders, for example, because that's something I'm working on right now. He has also provided the lectures accompanying this book on YouTube. So if you want to learn a lot about deep learning and everything, what I would do is I would take every lecture that has the accompanying chapter and then I would go over the chapter and then watch the lecture, for example. I think that's a really good way to go over this uh, particular book. So the last book that I really like, I found this in a secondhand shop. It's The Computational Brain by Patricia Churchland and Terence Shenusky. Shinovsky? I'm not sure. Um, I really like this brain because it also dives a little bit into more the general idea of computational neuroscience. Like, And in general, it's written in a really easy manner. There's a little bit less formulas, which I would recommend if you're not a mathematician or you haven't done any physics, for example. I think this book is a little bit easier to read. And also Patricia Churchland is still doing research and she also made this TED talk that I really like. So she's also a researcher that I follow. So yeah, this I would also highly recommend. So then I want to go to some more pop science books. So I I do read a lot of pop science books in my spare time and that is because I think pop science books are usually a little bit easier to introduce us to a certain topic and also to spark our curiosity because I sometimes think if you dive straight into a textbook all joy of the subject is just sucked out and you're left with this really dry material so I think if you're starting in the field it's maybe a bit nicer to start with some pop science books so I have picked three that I have read over the last few months. I've read many more, but I try to contain myself not to recommend all of them to you. So the first one is Models of the Mind by Grace Lindsay. And I really like her as a researcher. She's a computational neuroscientist that has also done extensive work in AI. And I think she's a really good example of what you can do with computational neuroscience. She really talks about different ways we can model brain structure and certain processes and all the different models that have been introduced over the years. So in general, 
general, one of the main messages of the book is that most models in physics or in uh, theoretical AI or all these things are a lot simpler than what is actually there in the biological system, which is our brain. And she really discusses different ways we can approach this problem. So I really enjoyed it. The only thing I do have to say that the book is not a light read. I would almost put it between a textbook and a pop science book because it goes into extensive detail of different historical facts. And I personally maybe would have left this aside because it's quite hard to get through to certain chapters. But I do think the book really gives a nice overview of the field of computational neuroscience and all the things that were possible and how we have gotten where we are today. So the second book that I want to recommend is Consciousness Explained by Daniel Dennett. And the reason I want to recommend this book is because a lot of people ask me in the comments about the problem of consciousness and how consciousness can arise from our biological brain. And I have to say that this is just not my expertise or um, a topic that I'm personally well versed in. So that's why I usually avoid answering these kind of questions because I think my opinion is as good probably as yours. So in Consciousness Explained, Daniel Dennett explains his view of consciousness and the model that he proposes to solve the hard problem of consciousness. So the hard problem of consciousness is the problem of explaining why and how humans have qualia or phenomenal experiences. This is in contrast to the easy problem of explaining physical systems that give us and other animals the ability to discriminate, integrate information and so forth. So in general, Daniel Dana talks about different facets of consciousness. He starts by a full explanation of the problem of uh, human consciousness and so the easy problem and the hard problem. Then he gives us the history of how we have thought about consciousness over the last few years. And then he gives his empirical based theory and finally he shows how this theory matches up to real world examples. So again, I do not think this book is an easy read as well. I actually think it's quite dense and also within the field of consciousness because it is such an old field, there are a lot of terms that are used that if you're not used to uh, philosophy or this type of speech, it's quite hard to understand perhaps the first time. So if I would tackle this book as a beginner, I would probably read it chapter by chapter and also try to watch accompanying lectures that explain certain problems in a little bit more detail because philosophy is um, as hard, I think, as a lot of other uh, topics if you're not well versed in it. So yeah, if you have read the book and you think you know the answer to the hard problem of consciousness, I would actually love to know, so put it down in the in the comments below. So the third book I want to talk about is a book that it is a lot easier and a lot more for beginners because I also wanted to put an easy, fun, light read in here. So that's The Idiot Brain by Dean Burnett. And I personally really love this book. It's super funny, I find, and even as a neuroscientist, some of the facts he explained were quite new to me or a little bit surprising. So he talks about sleep, memory, intelligence, all of these things. Um, so he also gives this example of Phineas Gage, which is this really famous neuroscience story about a man who got this rod to the front of his prefrontal cortex. And with this, his personality totally changed and this was in neuroscience a really famous story. So in the book, The Idiot Brain, he also talks about that and he has many other funny and really interesting stories. Yeah, and so with this, I want to end the video. If you are missing a book and especially textbooks that you personally really like within neuroscience, I would love to hear. So put it down in the comments below and otherwise see you next week. Bye.